people with type 1 diabetes have to manage their condition with, uh, with insulin. So to do this they have to measure blood sugar levels regularly and one of the dangers is that if they get the dose wrong they can either be too high or they can go low into something which we, we and they call a hypo. I'm Claire Pestfield and I've got type 1 diabetes and that means that my body is unable to make insulin which regulates my blood sugar level. So a hypo is when my blood sugar drops too low and I can have minor hypos every day. They are not a problem um, and they're easily picked up um, in most people. But severe hypos when I need the help from someone else, I was experiencing every week. But since I've had Magic, who's my medical alert assistance dog, I haven't had a severe one in the two and a half years that I've been together with him. Overnight are the worst times for me in these hypos. And obviously when you're asleep, your body doesn't always wake up to those warning signs. And when your body doesn't make those signs, your blood sugar can drop very, very low until someone realises. So the footage shows magic. He's actually woken up and he's detected that my blood sugar is dropping. And then he's trying to wake me up to tell me that I need to do a test. And then if he's correct, I would take action to prevent it getting any worse. We measured breath samples from volunteers with diabetes at different blood glucose levels. In particular, one of the things we did was to lower their blood glucose very carefully to the sort of levels they might experience at home during a hypo. And we measured chemicals coming off breath. And one of the key things we found is that a chemical called isoprene, which is present in small amounts in, uh, in breath from all of us, rose markedly. It, it, it doubled approximately during hypoglycemia. We, we then measured a defined list of chemicals that we had to, uh, we had to anticipate in advance. So isoprene was one of the things we measured. One of the differences, of course, is we, we can only measure a very limited repertoire here, but it's, it's clearly, given the sensitivity of a dog's nose, it's completely possible that perhaps one of the many cues that uh, medical detection dogs are picking up on is this chemical uh, in, in breath. Um, a hypo is officially you know, 3.9 or less on the score. Magic and most of the assistance dogs are trained for a level of around 4.5 to 5. So it gives you a chance to make things right before it gets to a point where you're unable to help yourself. And that's really the biggest difference, is that we're getting this early warning sign before we're unable to help ourselves and then obviously become unconscious. Magic has changed my life in a number of ways. I can go out in the evenings, I can stay overnight, go to conferences, but also it's simple things. Before I had magic, I would have to test my blood sugar level every hour, day and night, to try and preempt when these episodes would happen. Having magic now means that I can go to bed and not worry about whether I was going to wake up in the morning because I know that magic will actually wake me up in the middle of the night if my blood sugar starts to drop too low. So magic was just over 18 months when I got him and we've been together now for just over two and a half years um, and in that time he's alerted over two and a half thousand times which is amazing when you think he's only doing it for a biscuit. So clearly one of the things we're, we're hoping with this research is this might lead on to the development of some sort of sensing technology. So for example, we could even imagine something a bit like a breathalyzer that people with diabetes could use to, to detect hypoglycemia or even replace, at least in large part, the, the necessity to prick fingers to, to measure blood glucose. Dear world, yours, Cambridge.